So was the bastard you were after now riding with the cowboys? Roscoe Bob Bryant was his name. Oh. But no, this time it was a different bastard I was after. The aforementioned Mr. Ringo. And yes, he was working for old man Clown. Yo. Hold up for a gunslinger. I came upon them robbing a stagecoach, which wasn't surprising being they were such murderous thieves and bastards. The bandits wore red scarves, so I knew they worked for the old man. Over there! There! I did my best to help those poor passengers. Moments later, the attackers were dead. And I checked the stagecoach to see how many passengers were still breathing. None. It was then I wondered if the rocks weren't hiding more bandits. Was that all of them? Or did I just hit the rear guard? I quickly got my answer. They attacked from on high like Apaches often did. <laughs> Appear in great numbers from above and rain down lead on their hapless enemies' heads. Making use of the high ground, whatever else they have. Yep, the Apaches always appeared out of nowhere. And there never seemed to be an end to it. Hold on, were you attacked by Apaches? W what happened to the cowboys? Did I say they were Apaches? I said Clanton's cowboys attacked me Apache style. I was in a pitched battle. But I was holding my own against an overwhelming enemy force. See, at the time, I was still pretty green, but often blunder into regrettable situations. But I just kept shooting at anything I could see up in those damn rocks. I didn't see Ringo, but I knew he was with the cowboys. He and Roscoe Bob had done me a dreadful wrong. I was determined to have my revenge. Huh? Aha. Aha, det där är nu fattar jag. Det är när jag har det där. See at the time, I was still pretty green and would often blunder into regrettable situations. But I just kept shooting at anything I could see up in those damn rocks. I didn't see Ringo, but I knew he was with the cowboys. He and Roscoe Bob had done me a dreadful wrong, and I was determined to have my revenge. Man, that was a felvasta. But to get to Ringo, I knew I'd have to find my way past these other assholes first. Unfortunately, I was running out of ammo. Another perfect example of my relative inexperience as a hunter of men. I immediately knew that a tactical retreat was called for, as my vengeful fury was much less impressive without the bullets to back it up. Finally, they managed to corner me. Trapped as I was, the odds of my survival seemed pretty slim. Luckily, serendipity was on my side as I suddenly spotted a way out of my predicament. Uh -huh. Oh, yo, 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 Devil himself was after me. Uh. Bullets were whizzing by my ears, but I wasn't about to roll over and die. I just kept Sweet running like there was no Aye. harm. Because there wouldn't be. Clanton and his men caught up. As I was scurrying around those caves, I thought, what was I thinking? Going up against a gang like this. 
They were hunting me like I was game. I just kept running, not knowing where the hell I was going. Kitten me. Nowhere to run. Oh, fall damage. Oh, I see you. Did I little lot? What the fuck? And that's when something miraculous happened. Like mana from heaven. I found the desiccated remains of what looked like an Apache warrior. The old weapon next to him supplied me with some much needed ammunition. Bat Masterson once told me it was more important to be lucky than good, and he would know. And imagine my surprise when I found a fistful of dynamite to go along with that ammo. That stroke of good fortune even the odds and bolstered my confidence. It was time to turn the tables. Time for the prey to become the predator. Time for the hunted to become the hunter. Time. <laughs> All right, Jesus, we get it. They were right where you wanted them. That's right, Jack. I was done running. And the old man's boys were not expecting that. No, sir. I came at them like a wild cat. My fury knew no bounds. It was finally time for that old man to pay for his sins. Yeah. A little stealth might have made more sense, to be perfectly honest. Because that old fool had a gallon gun and enough bullets to last him till the kingdom come. But I knew I could not let that deter me. Not if I was to find and kill Ringo. I needed to get that old man off that gun. <laughs> Boys. Amen. Låt mig få springa en bit då. tell you that was the longest uphill climb of my entire day oh. well, one of the longest there was that one time I was pursuing Frank James Jesse James's brother Jesse James perhaps we could talk about that one later now where was I right I had old man clan in my sights most everyone thought it was the Ruales who had come up against him in Guadalupe King, but it was just me. Damn, it's dead! 
Ya, 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 ya. Apparently, one of the cowboys made it out of there alive and told Ike and Billy Clanton that it wasn't a Mexican who took their father's life that day. They just assumed it was one of the Earps. And that little misunderstanding eventually led to that legendary gunfight at the old K Corral. Whoa! No, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> A few weeks after that dust up at the OK Corral, I was still after Johnny Ringo. I had tracked him and the cowboys to their hideout at a sawmill, and they were loaded for bear. So what exactly did Johnny Ringo do to piss you off? Well, him and that other bastard. Roscoe Bob Bright? Yep. They both deserve to die, and I promise I'll tell you why. But first I need to tell you about the cowboy's new boss, Curly Bill Brocious. Hey, stop it! Get ready, boys. Curly Bill took charge of the Cowboys upon the old man's demise. And after that gunfight at the OK Corral, the Clans wanted revenge. So they murdered Morgan Earp and grievously wounded his older brother, Virgil. Became known as the Vendetta Ride, hunting those outlaws down. So when I showed up, that's who they thought I was. I'm tired of being shot at. You maniac! Amor. Amor. <laughs> there were killers around every corner, all wearing red bandanas. That's how the cowboys identified each other. And I was beginning to wish I had one myself. But I wasn't about to let Ringo walk away unscathed. And that's what <laughs> forward. They say that Ringo was infernally fast. I hardly saw anyone faster, boy. Certainly not Wyatt Earp. That man was all hat and no cap. wasn't much of a match for him, but Doc Holliday might have taken him. That longer should have kept his nose out of it. They never charged anyone for the murder of Morgan Earp. Good thought. God damn you! I'm you down. But everybody knew that Curly shot him in the back. That was common knowledge. Well, maybe so, but Ringo had nothing to do with it. He was just being loyal to a friend. Is that what you call it? Being loyal? Well, to get to that loyal friend, I had to pass by some buzzsaws as big as a man. 
Excuse me, sir. I have a question. What's that, Dwight? After old man Clanton died, why didn't his son take over the Cowboys? Because I, Clanton, was dumber than a box of rocks and a yellow belly to boot. Now, where was I? Taking down the entire cowboy gang single-handed. Indeed I was, Jack. It wasn't easy as those boys had good cover. everywhere, piles of lumber, and God knows what else for people to hide behind. That really was one hell of a sawmill. Quite an impressive operation. And where was Curly Bill? Did you see him? I'm about to get to that, Ben. Patience. I'm painting a picture here. There was this beautiful waterfall and a crystal clear stream that led to a verdant valley that was truly Consider your picture painted. What happened next? Well, finally the bastards that were still alive made a last stand. Curly Bill, Johnny Ringo, and his compadres took off into the lumber yard, and I followed after. and they ran. Cowardice was not in Ringo nor Curly Bill's nature. No, sir. I never said they were running scared. They just wanted me out in the open. Det är svårt att se vilket håll.
見に行ってセンターあ、ダイエット、ハーキックリック。え、このドアキュリアのスミッキ I always thought that Doc Holliday was the one that killed him. I thought that I'm speed hell. I would have a bicycle system. It's incredible, sir. I always thought that Doc Holliday was the one that killed him. Sorry, I had to ruin the legend for you, boy. But the legend ain't always true. Doc Holliday had nothing to do with the death of Johnny Ringo. I was paid a healthy bounty for Ringo and Curly Bill, and realized there was real money to be made. That's why I went after Henry Plummer. I 
wasn't he the sheriff who augmented his income by shaking down miners and robbing gold shipments? That's the one. Oh yeah, I remember him. He ran that gang of thieving outlaws called the Innocents. So it's true that you went toe-to-toe -to -toe with him? Indeed I did, son. Indeed I did. I knew I needed resources if I was going to track down Roscoe Bob Bryant. And hunting plumber looked like a good way to get rich quick. As the local vigilantes exposed him as the leader of the bandits and put a generous price on his head. Plumber rallied his gang to plunder one last gold mine before making their escape. And that's where I thought I'd find him. It makes me nervous standing so close to all these goddamn barrels of gold powder. Why would you be nervous? No one has the <laughs> As my the late father pointed out to me more than once, up. God made men, but Samuel Colt made them equal. Hell yeah. I knew that dynamite wasn't mine, so I decided the polite thing would be to return it. It was the biggest gold rush since Sutter's Mill in 48. Unfortunately, prospectors weren't the only ones drawn to those riches. There were thieves and killers, robbing travelers and hijacking gold ships. Like those that ran with Plumber, some were just regular folks I knew from town, drawn by greed and easy pickings. Oh, hey. Charlie Crow, the blacksmith. James, who worked in the stable. Sam and Jeremiah Barber, the butcher's son. Of course, the rest were veterans of the Civil War. Stone-cold killers trained on the bloody fields of Shiloh and Antietam. Palmer had a lot of men on his payroll. A hell of a lot. That son of a bitch pretended to protect the public with one hand, while stealing them blind with the other. He set up a defensive perimeter which I had no idea how to break. Dangerous, desperate individual. I was outnumbered and in way over my head. But I was too damn stubborn and stupid to realize it. They must have thought I was tough. Or had some kind of death wish. Seeing as there were barrels of gunpowder everywhere. One stray bullet, one stray spark, and I'd be blown to hell and gone. I thought I was some kind of hero. I finally made it past and headed on to meet my destiny. But first, I had something I needed to figure out. I had a few ideas on how to get into that mine. But once I made my decision, I knew there was no turning back. So my first thought was to enter the nearest mine portal. I saw an entrance. Made sense. <laughs> okay. It was the quickest way in, but that also made it more dangerous. Undoubtedly be enemy pickets posted along the way. What the heck just happened? Besides, once you enter a mine like that, it's easy to get all turned around. And that confusing maze of corridors wouldn't even be the worst of it. Some of those shafts could be as deep as hell. Single stumble or misstep can easily end in a deadly plunge to oblivion.
quick reflexes often make up for a lack of common sense. Luckily, I was never one to be easily pushed away. I would just need to be careful not to blow myself to kingdom come. With all that oh, gold yeah. and dynamite everywhere, a body has to know what he's shooting at. Me. One wrong bullet could have turned that mine into a dead blasted tube. Ridiculous plan before I even tried it. Instead, <laughs> I fucking knew I spotted it. a ladder way into the mine from the opposite side. The front, yeah. It was a long way around, but that approach seemed more sensible at the time. Of course, being I had a problem with heights, that scaffolding scared the bejesus out of me. Climbing down that ladder required some caution. Because oh. even though I had a younger man's reflexes, no man can dodge a damn bullet while climbing down a rickety ladder. I needed to make a leap of faith. Which ain't easy when you're suspended between heaven and hell. I was determined not to give up, however. That Sheriff Plummer seemed quite the despicable character. When the vigilantes discovered what the Sheriff was up to, the people were outraged. That 10,000 they put on his head would go a long way to helping me find the old car. And I have made it my mission to that score come hell or high water. But first, I would have to make a choice. Take the elevator, or climb the ladder. I picked the more convenient and more dangerous route. City deserved better. Nevada City? Well, I thought Plummer met his maker in Bannock, Montana. What are you? Yeah, right. Well, he was a sheriff of both places at one time or another, but that's neither here nor there. The point oh. was, taking him down would save a lot of lives, including my own. Granada! see right away that this was going to take some doing. Sucker out! 
That's how Henry Plummer died. Him and his crew were worth their weight in gold. And now, I was officially a bounty hunter. So, did you finally go after that Bob feller? Well, I heard word he was in Kansas with John Wesley Hardin. So that's where I went. Where in Kansas? Abilene. Why do you ask, Ben? No reason. Was Hardin as fast as Ringo? Ringo was fast, but John Wesley was as fast as the devil himself. He killed his first man at 15. From that day forward, he had a price on his head and wouldn't back down for nobody, not even Wild Bill Hickok himself. I dodged death many a time. And that night in Abilene was no different. Oh. Look in there, like that. I was there with the intention of finding that bastard Bob and collecting the bounty on John Wesley. Look in there, like I think that the hash of Nesta. Hell do you do fall? Oh. Damn him. Say it in Nesta. Yeah. 